At this local high school football game, no one is using these concession stands because there's no Wi-Fi to run the transactions. Not selling hot dogs because there's no Wi-Fi, you ask? Not on my watch. I couldn't let this travesty continue, so I drove down to the school and talked to the principal and offered to set up an outdoor Wi-Fi network. So today we're setting up an AP27 access point. First impression is that it's very solidly built, and I found out it carries an IP67 rating. Having that rating means it's weatherproof and dustproof, and it can also withstand temperatures negative 40 to 150 degrees Fahrenheit. It has a built-in ground connector for surge protection, so this thing is built to last outdoors and is perfect for the harsh weather we get out here in the Gerudo Desert. Even with the rugged build, it's Wi-Fi 6 certified, and a single one of these can connect up to 75 Wi-Fi devices, which is perfect for all the different vendors out here. When I first went to go install the device, I was thinking of installing it in the brick or cinder block on the side of the building. I was going to drill some holes and use some Tapcon screws to hold it down, but we couldn't find the building plans and I didn't want to accidentally drill into some pipe or wires, so we had to look for another solution. The awesome school IT guy that was with me suggested we install it up on the press box. The press box was a great location, but it made it difficult because the only thing we had to attach to was this chain link fence. We climbed on the roof to scout it out and found there's Cat6 network boxes already in place and we're sitting directly above a server, so this makes it a perfect location. So now we just have to figure out how to attach an access point to this metal fence. I grabbed the mounting plate for the AP27 and measured out the whole locations then I went to a hardware store and found this plate that's built for a chain link fence. And luckily these holes seem to match up perfectly. The 516 bolts that came with the plate are the right size, but they're a little too short. So I'll have to replace them with something longer. I also thought about using one of these U-bolts to hold down the mounting bracket, but it was too big for the poles on the chain link fence. When I first went to install the mounting bracket, I got a little nervous because it was way too big. It was just sliding around and there was no grip, but I learned if I turned it the other way, I could put longer bolts through and it would be able to hold it down. Luckily the plate fit perfectly, and for now I'm only going to hand tighten the screws on the base plate, and I'm going to go downstairs and test that the access point is going to work with the server in the press box. Right now the game announcers have to plug directly into the server to gain access to the internet. To set up the access point we plugged it directly in, then we downloaded the app and went through the steps to set it up. All we had to do is give our network a name and set up a password, and we were up and running. I can't emphasize enough how easy it was to set this thing up. Just by following a few steps, we now have a Wi-Fi network running through this press box. The app made it very simple to navigate, and from the home screen we could see how many devices were connected and how long, and also check on the network status. In the settings, I also saw that we could set up a mesh network where multiple access points could connect together, but we'll have to do that in another video. With the access point all set up, we decided to run a couple speed tests, and the results were fantastic. Granted, this is ideal speeds with only a few devices connected right now, so I'm going to go back up on the roof and install the access point so we can start doing some real tests. After I tightened those bolts, this thing was rock solid and was not going to go anywhere. If you want to do a similar setup, I'll have this mounting plate linked below. Because I want to use the school internet, I'm going to hardline an ethernet port into the bottom jack. There's several ethernet cables that are ran up to the roof, so I have to figure out which one I'm going to use. To figure out the correct cable, I'm going to use one of these audible network pens. There's an adapter that you plug in to the cable, and you'll hear an audible sound when you find the correct port. I found the correct port, so now I'm going to connect it to the server, which now makes that wire live up to the roof. I got it connected, but this cable's bad, so later I'll have to go back and replace it. I'll go back and update this so everything's waterproof, and that includes installing the waterproof plug in this port. We now have the school network connected, so now let's go test the access point. The first test I'm going to do is about 20 feet from the access point. I pulled up a speed test app on my phone to check the upload and download speeds, and not surprising, it did amazing being so close. It pulled 300 megabits download speeds and 400 upload speeds. Next, we're going to test about 75 feet away from the access point. From about 75 feet, we were pulling in about 250 megabit download speeds, and over 100 megabits per second. Next up, we went down to the end zone, which was about 240 feet away. 
Now this one was very surprising and we were getting over 300 megabits a second. And I don't expect these speeds to happen when there's a full football game going, but it was pretty cool to see. For the next test, we went all the way off the football field into the concession stands area. And according to Google Maps, this was about 375 feet. This far out, we were getting about 30 megabits a second, which was still very impressive for being so far away. I want to make a note that the AP27 is not a Wi-Fi extender, but it's a network access point, so it has much better latency and bandwidth performance. If I had multiple access points, I could link them together in a mesh network, and a mesh network provides a near seamless Wi-Fi experience. For this test, I'm about 310 feet away and lower elevation, and still getting fantastic speeds. Even though there's hardly anyone on this network, it's pretty amazing to get these speeds 300 feet away. For this test, I wanted to see how far I could go with getting a signal, and I went about 400 feet away behind some trees, and the signal was just too weak to reach all the way out here. However, as I mentioned earlier, if I had additional access points, I could create a mesh network and get coverage all through the parking lot. For the next test, I wanted to see how it would perform inside a building, so I went inside the metal press box, and the speeds were quite a bit lower, even though the box was only about 30 feet away. When I tested speeds earlier on the computer, the access point was inside the building, so the speeds were much faster. This test shows that we still get great connection inside a building, but the speeds can slow down in a metal enclosure. For the last test, I was very lucky it was raining, so I could see how it would do outdoors in a storm. On the other hand, I was very unlucky because it was freezing out here and I was really, really cold. For the distance of this test, I'm about 115 feet away, and it's a rainstorm, and I'm still getting 100 megabits per second, and this was actually the slowest speed that I got. So to sum it up, the HPE Instant On Access Point AP27 did an incredible job. Just like the name says, it was almost an instant setup through the app, and it was very easy to install the device. The build quality is fantastic, and it did very well in harsh weather conditions. I'm just happy we got the concession stands and needed coverage, and these football players can now celebrate a victory by picking up a Bahama Mama hot dog at the concession stand. And as always, if this video helped you, please go out and help someone else. Thanks for watching.